Hi and welcome to Scott's Inverts, I'm Scott. These are the inverts. Today we are doing a room tour part 20 as well as looking at two quite sick individuals. Um, I could do with your guys advice on these because one of them I've never actually experienced this problem before. The other one is a pretty normal experience if you like. Um, but you'll see more as we get into this video. Towards the end of this video um, we're going to be talking about the hell of a week the whole hobby has had. Anyway, let's get in to today's video. So this makes me happy. It seems forever waiting for this purple, this species Peru purple to start webbing. And she has. Um, she's actually an Avicularia gerensis M2, so morphology 2 um, species. Absolutely stunning. Her bum's still bold like the day when we got her. Hopefully she'll molt pretty soon. Fingers crossed she will because she's absolutely stunning and she's laid all this web in so I'm hoping that's all in preparation for a molt. I'm going to dampen her down um, in the middle of the week and hopefully that will help aid her and, and force that molt to come along. Our Carabina Versicola. We bought this as a paired female from Creatures from the North. Um, yeah, she, she molted out so we didn't get an egg sac unfortunately. Um, was that their fault? My fault? Mm, who knows? Uh, I don't know, I don't think I actually raised temperatures enough for her, so it's probably more my fault than theirs, but it still still annoyed me. But, <laughs> but just look at those legs. Either way, she is in perfect condition, an absolute stunning adult female. Beautiful girl. And in our Stranger Things enclosure, Polythearia Metallica P-Met. Gooty Sapphire, however you want to say it, these spiders are gorgeous. And this one, she is absolutely gorgeous next to Vecna there. All that blue and the yellow markings as well with that carapace and the markings on her abdomen. They really are just an exceptionally special spider. I think when these first got discovered, people thought they were black and white because we only had black and white TV sets back then as well. Absolutely incredible. Now this is our Sarah Gadaitis, uh Darlingi, C Darlingi, and she's missing her fangs there. So she's had a molt and she's dropped two of her fangs. Um, I'm absolutely devastated because I just I don't I'm not I'm a, bit, a little bit unsure as what to do. Um, I'm putting like semi dead prey in there for her. She's lost weight out of that abdomen. Um, so I just don't know what to do. Um, if you've had one of these, let me know down in the comment. If you've had one that's got no fangs and you've managed to get it to its next molt. I am considering smashed up food in a water dish maybe. Um, the Balfouri, our adult female Balfouri, she is still angry as ever. We've got a mature male in the background waiting for her to calm down. That's why we've also set her up in this smaller enclosure so they can pair. She can have her eggs and I'm not smashing up a really nice enclosure. And once she's paired and once she's had her eggs, she'll be going in a wicked set up where she'll spend the rest of her life. Um, she's just in here. I've got to tell you personally, just for ease of access for myself in case she does get an egg sac when we pair her up and have slings. Just make it a lot easier for me to gather all those up. But she is absolutely stunning. Those blues, wow. This is our Cancer Scuria species, Ilquitos. She's actually at once a red runner. That dubia is now in there as well. I think she could do with putting a bit more weight on around that abdomen. But I'm not going to hide her away from the camera because she looks a little bit rough. I'm still going to show her to you guys and get your guys' opinion as well as. Also, our Atlas Moth has been busy laying these little eggs. Hopefully they're fertile. Who knows? The male's wings were real badly damaged as he emerged from out of the cocoon. So I'm not quite sure if they actually paired up or not. These have been there probably just over a week now. So I'm going to give them another week and, and see what happens. Fingers crossed though we get caterpillars emerging out of these in the next couple of days. I'll be so happy. And in our tarantula room enclosure, heart bacteria, pulcarips. Um, we picked this one up. I haven't actually shown it on the channel yet. Um, this one is a subadult female, recently molted as well. And those legs have gone from the, that blue colour to this real dark black colour. So she molted about six, seven days ago. Um, fingers crossed that blue comes back and starts popping on those legs. If not, it'll be a little bit, I don't know. Have you ever, ever had a heart bacteria, pulcrips, where the legs have gone from blue to black? 
If so, let me know down in those comments. But either way, she is still absolutely stunning. Heart bacteria, pretty, pretty awesome genus, to be absolutely honest. And the paws on this one, again, just a beautiful, beautiful girl. Absolutely stunningly beautiful. Um, fingers crossed, like I said, that blue comes back. Uh, this is a Gigas African Train Millipede Baby. We actually gave our friend, our little lad up the road, um, three African Train Millipedes as a present because that's what he loves. And he managed to get them to breed and we now have 28 babies right here in Scott's Inverts. Uh, these are just so cute. So impressed that he actually bred these as well. So well done, Jalen, if you're watching. Boom! So that was part 20 of the Invert Room Tour. Um, again, those, I mean, have you ever had a spider with no fangs? Uh, absolutely mind-blowing for myself. I've heard about it, never seen it um, as such in person. And yet here I am with that Darlingi with zero fangs. All I'm doing is trying to kill the prey or subdue it so the spider goes up to it, thinks it's bit it um, when she's striking at him and then as it dies hopefully she'll munch on it. Um, I just want to know if any of you guys have been through this same situation. I am considering mealworms munching them up and put them in a water dish and hopefully she'll start sucking those up and munching on those with the mouth parts because the mouth parts are obviously still working um, and then hopefully we'll get her through a molt and then those fangs mm, will come back. The Cancer scoria species, it'll quit us if it's that genus. Um, obviously a wild caught specimen, a little bit rough in my view. She has, as I said in that video, she has eaten once. So the abdomen has grown now a little bit. I can't seem to get her to eat again. Um, I have obviously moved her away from the, the rest of my collection um, just in case. But she just, she's not displaying any of those signs. The only signs that she's displaying is, is she's not eating as much as what she should be, really, in my eyes anyway. The problem when you get a new species, um, and it, it's thought to be an Acanthus scuria species illquitos, is, is it, you know? Has it been correctly identified? We don't actually know at this point. Um, so... If you guys know for 100% what spider that is, please let me know down in those comments because that could make a great difference in, in how I actually keep her as well. She did come in a mystery box, um, so yeah, a bit, bit, bit of a bummer. But she has eaten a red runner, which is good. She's just not having those dubias. That dubia that you've seen in the video today, I've left that in with her, so fingers crossed she'll eat that. Now, I did this with the red runner. And that's, that's, I just stumbled across her and there she was eating it about a day later. So I'm going to do the same thing with the dubia. Maybe she's just a little bit shy. Um, but we'll see anyway going forward. We'll just see how she's getting on. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, there's a lot of panic in the hobby at the moment. Now I am no expert on this subject at all. Um, I'm just literally doing research and reading articles just as much as what you guys are. Um, we do need the science community to come together and, and kind of put something out there to aid us. All I will say is this. If you get any spider coming into your collection, if you buy it from your mate up the road, if you buy it from one of the online sellers, if you buy it from a show, wherever you buy it from, just quarantine it. Uh, we can do this by moving it into a separate room, giving it its own feeders giving it its own tongs and its own catch cup and its own water bowl and then just washing our hands as we come back from that one to our own collection um, and just be a little bit vigilant and quarantine them for three to four months I think that's what the I think that's what most people are kind of suggesting at the moment that may change when the scientific -y people come along and go well actually you only need to quarantine for two weeks who knows but at the moment you know I'm quarantining three to four months and going from there but anyway guys uh, tomorrow night, micro exotic. So Adam has donated his life to supply in the UK trade with these beautiful isopods, common ones, rare ones, super rare ones, and all the rest of it. And we're going to have a chat with Adam, kind of how he got into the whole hobby, his life, and all the rest of it, as well as having a look at some of his awesome, awesome isopods. And hopefully taking away some of that fear about the rarest stuff being really, really difficult to keep. And hopefully Adam and myself can show you exactly how easy they are to care for. 
you don't have to do much with isopods. You set them up, you're pretty much all right for quite a while. You only really need to go back every now and again, top those foods up and just to make sure that humidity levels are right. But anyway, that is Tuesday, 8 p.m. UK time. Get your notifications on, get subscribed. Uh, we've just done an epic giveaway for 9,000 subscribers. We had a really nice, nice live last week. Can't thank you guys enough, everybody that showed up. Thank you so, so much. Um, we have another giveaway planning ready for 10,000 subscribers if and when we ever hit that. Um, but the next giveaway that we will be doing is on Christmas Day, 6 p.m. live right here again at Scott's Invert. So if you're around Christmas evening, about 6 p.m., switch your, switch your phone on, come over, you might win something. If not, just come and have a... Um, just come and spend a little half an hour at Christmas Day with us. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, we shall see you again on the next one.